Hello everyone! Today we're gonna talk about telling time. I will explain the time zones. Uh, here is the, the globe again and there are 24 standard time zones, each with a central meridian of every 15 degrees of longitude. So there are 12 time zones to the west and 12 time zones to the east and here is the prime meridian. You see this is the zero zone uh, where you can find the uh, Zulu time or the Greenwich Mean time. Uh, 12 time zones to the west and 12 time zones to the east, 24 because there are 24 hours in day and night. So let me show you now the map and to show you the rules how to calculate time. Give me one second please. Okay. So here I prepared for you something. Let me go with the uh, map which shows you the time zones. You have this uh, map in your book also uh, and in my PowerPoint presentations. Um, there are two major rules uh, what we have to follow to calculate the time somewhere else. So these are vertical strips. You see they have a regular shape here because some of those... Uh, uh, time zones, they follow the boundaries of the countries, and that's why they look like that. But in each time zone, you see they have same colors, and the numbers are here on the bottom. Uh, the colors, they correspond to the numbers here. In one time zone, the time is the same. Uh, for example, as you see here, this is our time zone, plus 8. Here is Vancouver, San Francisco, LA. So all these places, they will have the same time. Before we start using the rules, I would like to show you the military time. So we use the military time. And in most of the world, actually, uh, people use military time. I remember that when I went to school, we always talk about military time. We never have a.m. and p.m. Uh, hours. So to avoid a.m. and p.m., we use this uh, uh, military time, and I gave you here one example how this looks like. You see, if you have 6.05 a.m., um, military time will look like 0605, like four digits. Um, if you have 6.05 p.m., you have to add 12 hours to 6, and this will look like 18.05. So you're going to work uh, in military time and make yourself familiar. Otherwise, you can get confused if you use PM, AM, or military time. Just stick on military time. All the assignments there in military time. The midnight is shown as four zeros or 24 zero zero. Now, let's go to the map and see uh, the rules. First, the first rule is to find the time zone range between two time zones. As you see here, uh, in the Western Hemisphere, the numbers are the same like in the Eastern hemispheres, uh, Hemisphere, but um, here they have negative uh, a sign, here they have positive. This is just a mark of the hemisphere. You don't use this uh, negative signs, for example, for calculation. Okay. So each of those numbers show you how many time zones to the zero zone. You see here is the zero zone, the prime meridian or the Greenwich meridian is here. For example, our time zone is plus eight. It means eight time zones to the zero zone. Negative two means two time zones to the zero zone. Um, some of the um, zones, time zones, they have uh, halves like three and a half. This half means half an hour. So uh, if you make the calculation, uh, don't forget that you have to add or subtract half an hour. And in the text on the, the first page of lab or in the book, in my PowerPoint presentations, you have an explanation about the rules. So you will always have a starting point, um, a place where you know the time and the date, and you have to go somewhere else where you have to find the time and the date. So, the time zone range, 
or how many hours difference between the two time zones. Let's say that we are here in plus eight and we would like to find in Washington DC the time right now, uh, which is plus five, time zone plus five. So what is the difference between plus eight and plus five? You subtract the two numbers, so three hours difference. If we are here in negative eight, but we go, we, we would like to find the time in negative three. So how many hours difference between these two time zones? Eight here and three here, 11, right? So when you have time zones with different signs or from different hemispheres, you have to add the numbers of the time zones to find the time difference. If you have negative one and negative seven, the difference will be six hours. You just subtract. If you have in this hemisphere, you also subtract. But if you have one here and one here, you definitely have to add the two numbers. So this is the first rule. You have to find how many hours difference between the time zones. Then the second rule says that you have to find the direction. You always have a starting point, like we are here for now. We know that, let's say, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and we would like to find uh, in Washington, D.C., the time. So the east locations, they first get the sunlight, so that's why going east direction, we have to add an hour per time zone. When we're going west, uh, we have to subtract an hour per time zone. And this is the difference actually between the time zones. It's one hour, the, dif the difference between two time zones. Okay, so let's say eight o'clock here, and uh, we have to find Washington, D.C. Plus five, plus eight, three hours difference, right? So from here, we're going east direction. Uh, Washington, D.C. is to the east. So we have to add to the local time in LA, we have to add three hours to find the, the time in Washington, DC. The same thing works if you work uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere. Going East, you add the time zone range to the local time. When we go in quest, let's see we're in negative, uh, we're in positive eight, and we would like to find uh, in Honolulu here in Hawaii the time. Um, if it's eight o'clock in the morning, so going west, we subtract two hours difference. Ten minus eight is two, right? So going west, we subtract two hours. Eight, eight minus two is six hours. So this is how it works. You have to remember these two rules and you have to follow them. In your lab here, this is the second page. As you see, you have... Um, some cities listed here, it says from, you have the time, you have the date, you have the time zone range. If you don't have it on your page, you can go to my PowerPoint presentation and copy the correct numbers. Otherwise, you have to use this map and to find your uh, time zone numbers. And then you have to go to these cities. So, to find the time zone range for the cities or you copy them. And you have to calculate the time here and the date also. Remember that when we pass midnight, we have to change the date. For example, 2401 uh, means one minute after 24, uh, which means that we are already next day. You have to change the date. If you subtract, goes the same way. So you calculate back the hours and you find your time and you change the date to the previous day. So here, for example, let's see you have Seattle, it's 1301. You have the date and you have to find the uh, uh, time in uh, Moscow, uh, for example. And uh, <clears throat> you have to find the time zone range the time zone range, this is how many hours difference. So first you have to know the time zone numbers. You see Moscow is negative three and Seattle is plus eight, remember? So this is our time zone. 
plus 8 and negative 3. How many hours difference? 11, right? You put here 11 hours. Now we have to find the direction. We are here, we know the time and date here. We're going this way, east, which means we add. Here you can put a plus sign just to remind yourself that you have to add uh, this 11 hours to the local time in Seattle to find the time in Moscow. So 13.01 plus 11 hours will be 24.01. Remember, I told you already that this is one minute after midnight. What is the date here? 6.22. What date we're going to put here? 6.23. So this is how it works. I would like to show you here some uh, cases uh, which uh, can make you a little confused. You see, if you have, for example, a time 1805 and you have to add seven hours. Um, so uh, this is 2505. You can leave it like that because there are 24 hours in day and night. You have to subtract 24 so this will be your uh, actual time, 0105, but you change the date. You go to the next date. If you subtract, let me show you. I have here an old-fashioned clock. Uh, you can see it. It's right here. You, you subtract. Let's say you have 9 o'clock and you have to go back and you subtract uh, 10 hours, for example. How do you subtract 10 hours? You start from 9 o'clock, you count 10 hours back, and uh, you reach uh, 11, uh, which is uh, 24 minus 1 will be 23.05. This will be actual time, and you will change the date. Uh, this will be the previous day. So, these are important things uh, to know, uh, or you can do this way. Uh, if uh, here is a sketch of the clock, 9.05, going back to midnight, there are nine hours, but you have to subtract 10, which means one more hour you have to subtract. 24 minus 1 will be 23.05, and this will be the previous day. You have to change the day. I hope that uh, this makes sense to you. I would like now to show you something else, the international date line. So you remember now the uh, rules for <clears throat> the time zones, how to calculate time. Now we're going to go with the uh, international date line. The international date line is uh, in the ocean to avoid any confusion, doesn't go through the land masses because uh, you have to change the date there. You know, um, if uh, you want to, to check the, the times right now and uh, you take the globe and you start from L.A. and you go to the east, you have to add an hour per time zone. So when you go back to the starting point, you see you will have 24 hours extra. If you go west, you subtract an hour per time zone, which means when you go back to your starting point, you will miss 24 hours. To avoid this confusion, the international date line was created. So here on this page, you have here, you see this is the 180 degrees meridian. Um, you know where the prime meridian is. On the opposite side of the globe is the international date line. When you cross the international date line, the rules for the IDL are opposite to the time. Going east, you see it says here, Going east, usually you add, right? But now, crossing the line, you subtract the whole day. Going west, you usually subtract an hour per time zone. Crossing the line, you have to add a whole day to compensate. So here on, uh, in this table, you see you have the international date line right here in the middle. And you have not all the time zones, but some of them on the western and eastern side of the international date line. So this is negative 12 and plus 12, and you see here there are few on this side and few on that side. And here you have one example how to do the, the time. So um, each square here is a time zone. 
So when you move from one square to another, you have to add or subtract one hour. So you can take a look here how this works and pay attention that the time on both sides of the international daytime is the same, only the date is different. So you will start from somewhere, let's say here. Let's start this one. Let's do this together. 1601 and it's Saturday. You go east. So for each time zone, you add one hour. It will be 1705, 18, 1901, uh, 2001. So here also you're going to put the same time, 2001. So here is Saturday. You go east. You have to subtract the whole day, which means you go to the previous day, which is Friday, right? Before Saturday, it's Friday. So this is 2001 here. Then we continue to add one hour because we're moving east direction. 21, 22, 23, 2401. We already had this case. 2401, which means you have to change the date to next day, right? So from Friday to Saturday. So if you go here, for example, Monday, you see you have the time. This time goes to this square also. Now you have to go west. Going west, you have to add a whole day. After Monday is Tuesday, right? You're going to put here 2101, but you're going to put Tuesday. And going west, you will subtract an hour per time zone. From here, going east, you add an hour per time zone. So this is how it's going to work. It's a, a kind of confusing, but uh, you didn't have enough practice. Uh, so that's why you feel like that. You just remember the rules. So going east, we add uh, an hour per time zone. Going west, we subtract. In this case, you have to be careful only here where you cross the line. Remember on both sides, the time is the same, but you change the day. Going west, you add the whole day, which means you go to the next day. Going east, you subtract the whole day, which means you go to the previous day. I think that this um, will help you. Good luck to everyone. See you soon.